Joining us uh, this morning, early Facebook and Google Investor Elevation Partners co-founder, Roger McNamee. Roger, great to have you back. I don't think you're, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think you're comparing this AI structural change to crypto or the metaverse, or are you? No, I, Carl, the, the big thing that's comparable is that the incentives of the system are not aligned with the incentives of society. So if you wanted to do AI properly, you would do it the way that people are doing in drug discovery, which is you have a highly curated training set and you put a great deal of effort into making sure that whatever outputs come out are always going to be accurate. Today's things that they're calling AI, particularly the generative AIs like what OpenAI makes with GPT-4 and ChatGPT, these are literally just BS generators. They have no verified content in them and the results are incredibly unreliable. And the notion that we're going to apply this to things like search, it's just, it's going to result in just one bad outcome after another. Uh, you, what you're saying reminds me of what the B of A desk said last week, and that is that the NVIDIA quarter uh, and the guidance and the actual dollars uh, being marked as a result of all of this made them believe that the market's going to sniff out any kind of uh, phony association with AI, that you can put it next to your name, but it's not going to, the market's not going to reward you necessarily the way it has NVIDIA. You disagree? Well, the key thing with NVIDIA is every time you make a large language model, you spend something like half a billion dollars on NVIDIA chips. That's real money. And the trick here is that the guys at OpenAI are trying to create the illusion that what they're doing is inevitable. And yet there is no obvious business model there's no way to monetize this other than with surveillance capitalism. And we know from social media how much harm that causes. And so what you're looking at here is a battle between the open AI guys trying to create the sense of inevitability and the reality of the marketplace saying, wait a minute, guys, interest rates are now 5%. Half a billion dollars in parts just to do each training set that you do plus the labor, plus if, if you do this properly, whatever the costs are of curating the data, that's too high in a 5% interest rate environment when you have businesses with no obvious business model. But isn't, isn't the business model, isn't it going to change everything? And I know there's a lot of dangers and a lot of worries about AI, but that it's going to make everything more productive and more efficient and lead to all this technological innovation and the way that the internet did ultimately improving the way we do everything. Well, that's what they want you to believe, but there's literally no evidence that today's technology can do that. I mean, the search engine results, you need to do fact checking on a search engine. That literally defeats the purpose of a search engine. And, the, the, you know, you see these stories. I mean, there was a story last week about the lawyer. You have lawyer to do that with Google, who, too. I'm not disputing that, but I'm not saying that isn't, that isn't progress. Right. When you have a thing with Google, Google gives you a long list of potential sources. This is going to give you one answer that sounds tremendously authoritative. And yet it has what they like to call hallucinations, which are basically just nonsense, made up things. And the point here is they could do really great work. AI has enormous potential. The trick here is you need to change the incentives. You need everything to operate where the, the executives who are leading these projects have an incentive to protect the people who use it, to ensure that the content produces accurate results. And neither of those things exist today. And until it does, until you see those things driving the industry, the products that they make are going to suck.